Hi, this is Pat Johnson, your sociology instructor. In this mini lecture, we're going to continue our discussion of global inequality and specifically look at high income, middle income, and low income societies. This map comes from your textbook and your author chose to use this set of data to determine which countries are high income, which are middle income, and which are low income. This map actually distinguishes between upper middle and lower middle income. Other textbooks that I've used, other sources of information have slightly different countries as qualified as high income, middle income, and low income. Um, the numbers that they use for income can be slightly different, but in general you see the same countries uh, ranked as high income, middle income, and low income. So let's take a look at high income countries. High income countries, the uh, according to the World Bank, have at least 12,476 gross national income, GNI, per person. Most people live in cities. Now some people, like myself, live in rural areas, but in general people in high income countries live in cities, the greater proportion of the population. High income countries are countries that industrialized early. So when you uh, watch the video on modernization theory, keep that in mind that industrialization early on in a society's history really makes it more likely that that country will be a high income country. In high income countries, there is decent housing, there's adequate food, and there is drinkable water. In fact, there are often laws about uh, water purity and like in the United States, we have the Food and Drug Administration and there are uh, codes for uh, construction. All of these ensure that people are more likely to live longer and more safely in high income countries. If we go back to this map, we can see that North America, United States, Canada, a lot of Western Europe, Saudi Arabia, Australia, New Zealand, all of these are high income countries. Just a few countries uh, in South America, Chile, for example, is a high income country. Japan is a high income country. We see them spread about the world, but most likely in the far south or the far north. Middle income countries are those with gross national incomes between 1,026 and 12,475. In middle income countries, slightly more people live in cities, but many people live in the country, and those who live in the country are likely to be engaged in agricultural work. These are countries that are more likely to have industrialized later, and although most people in middle income countries don't live in absolute poverty, there's a much lower standard of living than high income countries. So again, if we look at our map, we can see um, China, we can see India, we can see a lot of South America, the northern part of Africa, the far south southern part of Africa. These are places where there is uh, middle income and again that range upper and lower middle income can have a great difference in the quality of life. Now low income countries are those with uh, gross national incomes less than 1,025. So there is really a precarious life for most people in low income countries. Most people live in the country, but there are big cities, usually one big city, that is very densely packed with uh, people. These countries, if they are industrialized, they're just beginning to industrialize. Wages are very low. And lots of people live in absolute poverty. There's a much, much lower standard of living for most people in high income countries. So we can see our low-income countries, Afghanistan, a lot of um, sub-Saharan Africa, 
are countries that are low income. Uh, North Korea, can't see on this map, would be another low income country. Life is very precarious for the general portion of the population. It doesn't mean there aren't rich people in low income countries. There may, may be, in fact, some rich people, some very wealthy people, but they're more likely to live in gated compounds that are guarded where the masses of poor people cannot get in. So if we look at this uh, chart of global inequality, we can see that the amount of money in uh, the different countries it varies from very low wages to higher wages in high income countries. But it's not just that. Most of the people in the world live in middle income countries. There are slightly more um, high income than there are low income, but the majority of the world lives in low income countries. The annual population growth is much higher in low income countries. In fact, some high income countries don't have replacement rate. And what that means is there are more people dying than there are being born. So there's actually a negative population growth unless there is substantial immigration. Um, life expectancy varies greatly according to the wealth of the country that you live in. So in low income countries, you would be considered in very old age if you were in your late 50s or early 60s, whereas in high income countries, we are likely to live into our 80s. The fertility rate is high in low income countries, but so is the infant mortality rate. So although there are lots of births, a lot of those uh, children, a lot of those babies don't make it out of infancy. So there is quite a high infant mortality rate. So you can see on just these data points that life varies substantially, whether you live in a high income country, a low income country, or a middle income country. I happen to be a fan of the show on television, The Amazing Race, and I like the adventure travel, but another thing that fascinates me is watching the reactions of the participants when they go to countries that are not high income countries. So when the people on the amazing race venture into middle income countries and occasionally into low income countries, they're often shocked by what they encounter as far as the pollution, the densely packed uh, population in the cities, the lack of luxuries like we have uh, here in the United States, it can be vastly different and very eye-opening to those who travel to low-income countries or middle-income countries.